Hello, and welcome to the How to Choose Happiness and Freedom Show. I'm your host, Lauren Foster, happiness teacher and founder of Be Happy First. As a certified life mastery consultant, masters of wisdom and meditation teacher, and primal health coach, I'm on a mission to help 1 million women learn to be happy and free on purpose. Healthy, wealthy, and joyfully living life on your own terms. Happiness is a choice, and you can always choose to be happy first. Thanks so much for being here. Now on to today's episode. All right, and we, so today I was getting ready for the show, and as you know, I've been doing this inside for a really long time because I was all worried about the audio and that there might be birds chirping, which there are, and there might be this, and I'm like, I'm sacrificing my freedom and working where I want to work for this weird thing. So I'm back outside again. And if, if the audio isn't professional, you know, that's okay. Cause that's what I choose. So I am so happy to have with me today, my guest, Linda Beach, Linda, and I went to the same life coaching school, the Life Mastery Institute. And she, when I first met her, she was in the process of liquidating everything and heading off to Belize which I had done something similar back in 2008. So I was so fascinated watching her travels. And since then, we've gotten to know each other better. I've taken her retreat leadership courses. And so we're just going to dive right in. Welcome, Linda. Well, thanks for having me. I'm just giggling because I love that you're sitting outside because your doggy just walked by. (laughs) And it's real. And it makes me happy just looking at you in this beautiful, natural setting. Yeah. And this is my home. You know, this is, this is real life. And soon we're going to talk about this today. Soon as I can, you know, get my itchy feet out on the road, I'll be doing these from different locations as you are. So just start at the beginning. Tell us about Linda and how you arrived at um, what you're doing now. You've had a an awesome career as a, and, an entrepreneur and, and all kinds of things. So tell us about that. Yeah, an interesting journey. So I've been an entrepreneur pretty much my entire adult life. So, so probably 40 years, I've, I've started 13 businesses over those years. Some were more successful than others. The last brick and mortar business I owned was a chain of massage and aesthetic schools in South Carolina. And my background is in the spa and wellness industry. And I just loved teaching. I still love teaching and, and that, and being in that industry, but there came a point right about the time I met you when I was becoming certified as a dream builder life coach. And we had to work through our own dreams. I mean, to become a coach, you go through the coaching, right? Mm -hmm. So as I'm working on that, I had to ask myself, like, what is my biggest dream? And I had not given myself permission to dream like super big because, you know, we both know there often we put these little, uh, what do you call them? Like obstacles, parameters, you know, based on our current experience, that limitations. Perfect. So I was going, well, I can't do it because my kids are here. Well, wait a minute. They're grown. Okay. Well, I can't do it because I have this brick and mortar business, you know, and so I kept coming up against these limitations and then realizing that those were self-imposed and what if I kept saying what if you you could get rid of all the things that you own and what if you could sell your business and what if your kids were you know cool with that what would you do then so I've always wanted to live in the Caribbean I love to scuba dive I love to travel I just wanted to live somewhere right on the Caribbean. So that became my dream and my focus. And then I went about the steps of, you know, knocking down what each, what if, <laughs> each mm-hmm. obstacle as I went along. And it was crazy how things started aligning and happening because once you focus on your dream and really dream big and give yourself that permission mm-hmm. and not necessarily know how the heck you're going to get there, right? You're just going to take the very next step. Just, I mean, people say, I I can't believe what happened to you. Like, I can't believe that you're so lucky. And I remind them, it's not about being lucky. It's about following your dream, taking one step at a time and having a whole lot of faith that the universe is going to provide what it is that you want. Mm -hmm. So super long story short, I was living on an island without a bridge. And I had to pretty much, like you say, liquidate everything I own, including my business. And 
that wasn't an easy process. There was no, I, I had to take a boat to the island I lived on. So if I wanted to get rid of anything, I had to pay to ferry it off the island. So that took several months. It was huge. Like that was bigger than go, moving to Belize where I'd never even been. And I didn't know a soul, you know, it was just going through the process. So I ended up getting rid of everything. I ended up selling my business, which is another really cool story. Maybe we'll save for another day. Uh, just amazing how things lined up. And I did. I did move to Belize and launch my online business. I guess it's um, been a little over three years ago now. Maybe four. Gosh, 2004 years ago. <laughs> right? yeah, it was 2016, I think, right? Yeah. Oh, my yeah. gosh. You know, it's time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> yeah, it totally does. <laughs> Yeah, it really does. Okay, so um, I want to go ahead and get this out of the way. What has this whole COVID nineteen thing done for for limiting our freedoms to travel? And you know, I I live here. I live in on the the border of two states. So Tennessee has some rules, and North Carolina has other rules. And then our our mutual friend Tammy just moved from. California back to Michigan so she traveled all the way across the country through all different states and you're getting ready to do that too so assuming and we're we're totally coming back to this but assuming that our listeners have gone okay you know what I'm getting rid of all of my excuses I'm getting rid of all of my limitations I'm going to go and see and do what are what what's different today about being able to travel freely than well that's an interesting year? question because um I no longer live in Belize, and I'm actually not in Portofino. <laughs> Portofino. <laughs> we'll talk about that, uh -huh. why I have this backdrop up. But um, so when the whole COVID thing was coming around in, in March, I was in Hilton Head Island, South Carolina, which is near where I started my journey to move to Belize. That's where my, uh, my massage and aesthetic school was. And I had four months of travel planned out, which took me months to plan. So I was headed to Costa Rica March 30th. I was then going to Dominican Republic to do two wellness tourism events. I was then going to France to look at retreat venues. And then I was going to Italy for a month and a half to travel and host my own retreat. Well, suddenly all of that was off the table. And I had already given up the villa that I was had stayed in for five months to go travel for six months. And then I re-rented it starting this October 3rd. So all of a sudden I was left and I, for lack of a better word, homeless, because I, you know, I just, not now what? So it threw me in a bit of a tailspin where to go. So I actually, and I didn't, I didn't post this. I'm very visible on social media typically, but I kind of went into a hiding phase as, as a lot of my friends and and clients that we've talked about this where everyone was just in this weird little shell shocked. Oh my goodness. And I, I grieved first, you know, like I just had to give up this dream and this, and all this work and all this, you know, I had to refund money and all these things happening, but I decided that, okay, there are certain things that are outside of our control and COVID is one of them. <laughs> I couldn't, there, I couldn't help not being able to travel. I had no control over that. But then you, I, I shift. I don't believe in a plan B because I believe that if you're focusing on a plan B, then, then your energies are drawn toward that. I always feel like, you know, just plan A all the way. Mm -hmm. And if plan A doesn't work, then you just get a new plan A. So my plan A didn't work. So now it's time to get a new plan A. And as you and I both know, as Dream Builder Life coaches, you have to be specific about what it is you know, that you want and really think about that and, and put a feeling into it. And so I thought, well, I still want to travel. I still want to be somewhere fabulous. I still want to be in nature, but I have these limitations. So a friend of mine reached out and said, you know, why don't you come to Steamboat Springs, Colorado? Um, my cousin has a, a, a villa up on the mountain that she, that's empty right now. You know, everyone here is wearing masks and it's safe. And so my family was not okay with this. Like they tried to do a Zoom intervention and everybody's <laughs> like, you can't go. And I'm like, well, first of all, I mean, I'm driving. I drove across the country. That's why I say I didn't post about it because I didn't want people, I didn't want negativity. I just knew I would take all the precautions. I, my, my car was armed with like every sanitizing, you know, masks and gloves. And, and I figured I'm going to be in the car most of the time. And so that was the case. It took me 
actually five days because when I got tired, I just stopped and I found a hotel and I, I did research what states I could travel through and which states had hotels open. And, you know, I was real particular. I had my own sheets and pillowcases and things like that. So I made my way to Colorado and I, I was there for, gosh, let's see. So I got there mid April, May, June. Where are we? <laughs> So funny. Uh, July. <laughs> I was I was there up until a couple of weeks ago, um, and and had a lovely time, and was able to get out in nature and do some hiking. And so that's what I imagined that I could do during this time, where I'm just trying to regroup and figure out what was next and work on my business. And so and now I'm in Southern California right now. I came here um, to attend a conference. Well, it was virtual, but I came here to connect with some other entrepreneurs. And now I'm flying back to Denver and getting in my car. I kid you not, Lauren, come Friday. I have no idea where I'm staying until October 3rd. I'm, I'm going to be in my car driving because I decided that this is my freedom lifestyle. This is my dream is just to go find quaint little towns where I feel safe, where I where I can explore, find nature, do some rafting, you know, things that right now, you know, we have certain parameters around what we can do, but I just know that this is my vision and I'm going to go for it. I'm going to go and figure it out and under, and know the universe is going to provide that what it, whatever it is I need along the way. And so, yeah, I'm heading toward Michigan. <laughs> I need to connect with Tammy and see where she is. And um, we'll see how it unfolds because honestly, I don't know. People are like, you are so brave. I'm like, it, it is really kind of scary, but it comes down to, just trusting, trusting in myself. I mean, I have, I have what it takes. I've done this before. I've traveled solo many times. I moved to a country. I didn't know a soul, you know, a foreign country. So I can certainly travel across the United States, even though I can't travel out of the United States right now. For the so moment. that's, that's the plan. <laughs> it's, oh, you know, it, it, it is such a beautiful demonstration of how we're living our lives. So, and, oh, and I'm so envious. We're going to talk about the reason I'm not like doing what you're doing for, at the moment um, and how we allow things to, you know, we, we had to make decisions about, about our freedoms and things. But so Linda's going to be taking off on the next step that she can see. And then when, once she's there, she's going to take the next step that what she can see and enjoy every minute. And by the end of this, she's going to have an amazing journey. And this is what our life is. This is, ah, this is what I so want people to know. And that, that big, important first step of going, you know what? I get to choose. I get to decide how I want my life to be. And then Absolutely. I get, I get to co-create with this amazing universe and get that to happen. It's, oh, I, I just hope everybody yeah. hears this. And I, I hope that you're blogging and videoing your whole journey so that we can follow you across the country and all the things that you did. So let's, let's, I, I also love to travel alone um, be, because for a lot of reasons, but sometimes when you travel with friends, you, you stay with your friends and you don't get to meet anybody else. You kind of insulate yourself. So it's, so you miss out on that, on all the new people that you could become friends with. And I like to just do exactly what I want to do without having to consult with, it sounds, sounds selfish, but it's like, if I want to stop and eat hamburgers, I want to do that, no matter what mood anybody else is in. So there, th I could talk all day about the joys of traveling solo. Um, but like, you know, I want to hear, I want to hear your thoughts about, about. Well, I'll tell you, I travel solo. The first time I went to Italy, I I knew I could stay ninety days, so I bought a plane ticket for eighty seven days. I wanted to give myself a little bump, you know, a little mm -hmm. cushion. And I, went, I don't speak Italian. I'd never been to Italy before. I have some of the craziest stories. And I did share. I had one, somebody messaged me and said, you know, you, you shouldn't talk about the mistakes that you make. It makes you look unprofessional. <laughs> like, it makes me look human. Go away. Get you know, <laughs> I mean, when I first got there, I was, I'd been traveling all night. I got on a train in Rome. I took the train. I was going up to stay in this little town near Venice. And I would only ever, I'm from the South. We don't have a lot of public transportation. <laughs> I've never been on any trains. I've been on the subway in New York a few times. So when I got to my stop, exhausted, way too much luggage. I mean, I learned so much on that trip. Yeah. But when the train stopped, I stood there by the door and waited. And then the train took off. And I was like, 
and nobody spoke English on the train. I didn't know what I did wrong. And so some guy walked over and showed me there was a button with green arrows. I was supposed to push it to make the doors open. I thought the doors would open automatically. So I missed my train stop, ended up having to go way up the road to another town, get off the train, go buy a new ticket, go back the other way. It was like day one, it was foibles, the foibles of Linda in Italy. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> when I went back last year where I took this picture, um, I hiked up to this fabulous castle and I went back and I felt like I got this now. I've been there three months, but as, as two years solo travel, I went there to travel solo, but I did get lonely. And especially in a country where I don't speak the language because Italians love to sit around and eat together. And, and I would be in the corner eating by myself and I can't, you know, like in Belize, it's an English speaking country. So when I went there and people were chatting, I could, you know, sort of over here and butt in or say, hey, or what Italy, that wasn't the case. So I found myself longing for to meet up with friends. And thankfully, I actually had two different friends hosting retreats in Italy during that three month span. So I just jumped in, you know, not only do I host retreats, design retreats, teach people how to design retreats. I go on a lot of retreats because I want to have that experience of a small group of like-minded people that are traveling together. And yes, I know what you mean. Like after I travel with friends, I like to have a little solo travel time to do what I want, you know, but it also is fun to say, you know, to my friend who came with me to Portofino this day, she wanted to go eat sushi. I'm a vegetarian. So she took a taxi to go to some beach to eat sushi. And I hiked up to the top of this castle because I love castles. So, you know, we were able to kind of come back together and share Mm -hmm. cocktails later and, and share our fun stories from the day and our pictures. So yeah, my, my travel is, uh, you know, all over the place. One thing I don't like to do is get on a big bus with a bunch of people and, you know, a guy with a paddle (laughs) and a microphone and, you know, and then running you through the streets of all the tourist places. Mm -hmm. I'll never travel ever yeah. I, I did one little tour like that in um well it was in italy it was um uh, i can't i can't remember but yeah that, that I, I did that one time i'm like oh never again i'm never going to be herded around to wherever somebody wants me to go so that's awesome okay so tell us about the picture that is so she is actually in san diego but she's using the beauty of technology to have a backdrop of where she's supposed supposed to be where she was planning to be before all of this happened yeah yeah so i went to italy last fall for a month to um so when you're hosting and planning a retreat you certainly can do it without not ever being at that venue or that location like i hosted a treat retreat in bali and even though i'd been in bali before i'd never been to any of the venues where we traveled to but it takes a lot of research i had an assistant you know scour hundreds and hundreds of reviews and contact the venue and see videos and so you really have to do your due diligence me i just figured it would be a great tax deductible excuse to go back to italy <laughs> And visit the venues um, actually where we would be staying for the retreat that was planned for um, June 3rd that I had to cancel. So this was one of the days, uh, one of the excursions that was planned for the retreat, which I'm rescheduling for next May. Um, It was called Footloose and Fancy Free. And that's what it was about. It was about really like diving into another culture. And, you know, the thing about retreats that's different than a tour is that you know, like on a tour, you're running around and, and you're you know going to see as much as you can. Whereas a retreat, yes, you do go visit these wonderful places, but it's about the experience. Mm-hmm. And it's all tied around the theme that you've created for the retreat. So this particular retreat is just about finding your joy and happiness right up your alley, you know, like rekindling that part of you that is the inner child that wants to delight and just you know, exploring a castle or eating pasta or gelato, whenever you feel like it, you know, that's one thing. And when I go to Italy, I give my pers- per- myself permission to eat whatever the heck I want. I'm not on a diet. I'm going to eat, drink whatever I want, you know, and I'm going to, if I wake up one day and I want to go left and right or right and go, I, I just do it. So this is about creating space to go do things together like that, but giving people the time to go off and explore if they want to, or be alone or sit in their room or just sit by the beach. So it, it's a nice little balance. And that's what I love about retreats. If they're designed right, it's all about having that balance around a central theme with like-minded people. Like there's a lot of elements that need to line up when you're designing it, 
-hmm. so that it's the right experience. It's an, it's a memorable experience. So, okay. That a lot of our, a lot of, I, I run across a lot of people who are still stuck in their nine to five and they are, they are mm -hmm. just, you know, I, I think a human, one of the basic human desires is freedom is, you know, not, not being constricted and restricted and, and controlled. And I think we're all yearning for freedom in, you know, Absolutely. varying levels. And so how did you, and one of the ways to get time and location freedom is to start your own business. And a lot of people are like, oh, well, I don't know. I don't, what can I do? And of course, you know, Amy Porterfield, you're the one who introduced me to her, is that you can teach anything. So there are so many options out there. How did you arrive at the, the business that you're in that's location independent? And it's sort of at the same time, how do you teach women to discover what their, options are, what their opportunities are to have this freedom lifestyle. Give, give us a little bit about that. Right. So that was a real eye opener for me because I started studying, creating an online business about five years ago before I sold my brick and mortar business, because that was my goal. If I was going to live in Belize, I mean, I, I couldn't go there as an expat. And I mean, you can start a business, but it's very time consuming, expensive and a lot of hoops to jump through. I wanted to work online so that I could take my business. So I dove in, but I did everything. I call it bass backwards. I <laughs> ass backwards. I did everything. I, the first course I bought was how to create a Facebook ad. I didn't even have a product to sell. <laughs> advertise. I, I've done everything. I bought all the things I've, I've invested. I don't even know thousands and thousands of dollars um, in, in programs and coaching, trying to figure it out. I, I think I have, a, after almost five years, I have a good grip on it. So as a curriculum developer, someone who's owned a school and designed curriculum and written a textbook for years, I can take a lot of information and boil it down to, I think a, a an easy to follow step-by-step -step plan. So originally I was going to teach people how to create an online business because like you say, you know, there's a lot of people stuck in their nine to five as a business owner. Mine wasn't nine to five. It was like eight to eight, you know, right. <laughs> when you just do whatever it takes. And sometimes even later than that. Mm -hmm. So it's all about creating the freedom, but that can take a lot of different forms. Like you're saying, you know, I think that, you know, there's, there's, there's like maybe four avenues. You can main avenues, you can sell a physical product. And there's a lot of people that are in direct sales that sell, you know, a skincare line or wine or whatever. Really, yeah. uh, right. You could create um, uh, a course. You could do retreats. Um, and then it might be one or two other main, oh, coaching, of course. Right. Mm -hmm. So originally I was just doing life coaching and the dream builder life coaching. And then when we get on our coaching calls, we would discuss like, what are the next steps to take? But I found, cause I like, I like to do all the things, you know, I want to, I, I jump in and want to teach everybody everything. Mm -hmm. So it, it became overwhelming where I was trying to teach everyone you know, like how to create their business, how to decide on their business, how to do retreats. And it was too much. And there are people that do it better than me. I mean, I have to admit that there are people that have great programs that will teach you how to be an online entrepreneur based on what your goal and mission are, because it's not the same for everyone. Right. So for me, it was about, okay, well, if, for instance, if I'm in a, a nine to five job, could I still host retreats? I actually think it's one of the most brilliant ways to start working um, in a way that takes you out of your nine to five, gives you the freedom to travel, um, well, when, when we're able to travel, and make some really good money doing it. So initially, I, you know, I started shifting toward just teaching people. That's when you, you know, were jumped into my program. I was living in Mexico mm -hmm. and I did my first launch of Rock Your Retreats and, mm -hmm. and and took people through the, and during that coaching and that course, you learn about becoming an online entrepreneur and you, so there's a lot of elements involved in that program that teaches people about creating an online business. But now when this COVID thing happened, it's like, now what? I was about to relaunch Rock Your Retreats and I thought, well, that's just, that conversation feels kind of icky. You know, people aren't thinking of, they're thinking about how to keep, you know, stay safe and healthy not how to 
design a retreat to go wherever. Yeah, right? well, but I I want I, I want people like you to be assuming the best that this is going to be behind us soon. It's all going to be, you know, we're going to survive this and come out better, just like every other pandemic that we've ever had. We just are like 100%. any other thing. Yeah, and I'm just saying when it first it, when it first hit, I was like, wait a minute, are people really thinking about designing retreats? So the shift. I had to shift and think, well, how can we create, because I still want to work with my clients. And a lot of your listeners are thinking, well, I mean, I want to do a retreat, but what I'm trying to say is, and I'm probably taking the long way to get there, (laughs) is that I shifted to a virtual model. Like how can we create this experience for now um, and do it virtually, but do it so that people have a transformation. Because for me, that's about that's a reason to have a retreat is because you want to help someone have a transformation. Let's say you're an artist. Maybe you want to teach them how to do a particular type of art. You're a musician. You want to, you know, or teach them to find their voice. If you're a speaking coach, whatever it is. I mean, people don't realize that they probably already have one, two or 10 gifts that they can take and, and create a retreat around. And share. Yeah. Limitless, limitless. Just like, just it like online is. courses, you could you could do a retreat around anything. Anything, and Bird I don't know watching, if you remember. Butterfly watching. <laughs> remember, one of the lessons in the course is called one one big idea, mm-hmm. because we all, as multi passionate people and uh, multi passionate entrepreneurs, we have a gazillion ideas. So we need to take it and narrow it down. So mm-hmm. your retreat is designed each one around one particular idea and one promise. You know, typically, so. So now shifting to a virtual experience, which is kind of fun because you can do backgrounds like this. Like you can have everybody, you can teach them how to do a virtual background. And then everybody shows up at the virtual retreat with their own background where they want to host their next retreat or where they want to travel to next. And, you know, so you can, I call it, some people call it gamifying your virtual retreat. I call it funifying. So you're going to funify your retreat, creating an experience where people can have, um, the transformation that they crave or that you can provide for them, but there's also ways to monetize it too. So right now I'm focusing on teaching people how to design virtual retreats. And then of course, in-person retreats, they take a lot longer to design. So why not now? Now is not, now is actually the perfect time to start working on your retreat for next year. And I don't know if it was you, but several of the students have reached out to me and said, you know what, I'm going to go back through because now I have the time, I'm, I'm at home, I have time to really work on creating this retreat experience. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so to answer your question, I mean, there's a lot to learn about having an online retreat. And I don't, I, I don't want people to get overwhelmed with it because there are, and I do some coaching around that too, like how to just, let's just start with what you love, what your dream is. And, and we'll just start in the very first step. You don't need to take all the steps. You know, you just need to take one step at a time. Right. So maybe a retreat is your first step. That'll give you a taste of, of whether it's virtual or eventually in person, of having the freedom to create an experience for your clients um, or for, you know, the people that you're going to invite, your participants, whether it's virtually or in person. And it's something you can do while you're still in your nine to five and begin to, you know, build up some. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You just need to carve out a little bit of time each day to work on the planning mm-hmm. um, and give yourself a nice long runway. And, and yeah, and then I teach people how to, you know, like, and then what, you know, once you've designed it, how do you get people to sign up? Because, right. you know, you obviously need to find the right participants. Mm-hmm. I went on a retreat once and it didn't have a central, it had a central theme but there really wasn't a clear promise. And so it attracted the weirdest group of um, disconnected people that didn't, that really you wouldn't put in a room together on a good day. You just wouldn't. <laughs> and that caused some serious problems during the retreat uh-huh. with personalities conflicting. So, you know, it's important to, uh, to have a clear promise around, like, what is it that you're going to get out of this so that you attract the right people to what your event, whether it's in person or virtually with similar expectations. Yeah. That's, that's a, that's an awesome, important point. Okay. So this is a good time to tell us about your freebie that she has a something awesome to give to all of you for free. Well, I have the ultimate virtual retreat roadmap 
which is um, it'll it'll tell you the the steps that you need to take to start putting together your virtual retreat. And I have to tell you, and I just probably today I'm going to post the link and so I'll give it to you. Maybe you can post it under this video, mm -hmm. but I'm doing a virtual retreat challenge. So grab the freebie because you'll automatically get word of the challenge. I'll send you an invite, okay. but August 3rd, I'm doing a five day virtual retreat. Um, rock your virtual retreat challenge. And so it's going to take you five days through like all a little bit, dive into the details of creating the virtual retreat so that it's a fun experience for your participants so that you can make some money doing it so that you know all the elements to add into your retreat what to do what not to do and you know it just how to make it an unforgettable experience so that's going to be coming up soon too and 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 if you design a virtual retreat you've got a really good head start on doing an in-person retreat so you'll have this really great template to get started with because really you'll once you have your program designed you can take that virtual retreat program and plug it into an in-person retreat you just need to then go find the venue and you know do some of the logistics around traveling and it doesn't have to be italy people are saying well do i have to you know go far far away or yeah. costa rica no you can host a retreat in your backyard and that might be right mm -hmm. the best place to start is somewhere close that you can drive to or you can go check out or that people feel comfortable where they don't have to get on an airplane to travel to because even when you know it is safe to travel people might be a little you know timid at first to go terribly far away so that's probably where you'll start anyway right. so doing a virtual retreat is a great place to start for anybody new or if you've done retreats in person, it's a great place to go to now um, just to kind of get your mojo back about, you know, leading retreats for sure. Okay. So your five day challenge is for people who want to learn about hosting retreats, right? Yeah. Virtu it's around virtual retreats. But so the freebie is a blueprint and the five day challenge is going to go through that blueprint in much more detail. Gotcha. So they're both free. So get grab the freebie and I'll give you the link to the challenge too, because I would love everyone to participate in that. It's going to be a lot of fun um, where you can, you know, get a lot more detail about designing your virtual retreat. Awesome. And you know, I said, you're inspiring too, Linda. It's like I, every guest that I have on, I'm like, Oh, I'm going to do that. Oh, I'm going to do that. Oh, I want to do that. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, and I, you know, I took your class a couple of years ago. I don't know. Time runs together before COVID-19 and, right. and I still, I'm just always playing with ideas, but I'm definitely going to get in your challenge and, and see if that gets more solidified in my mind. Cause that, that's always been my dream is to let people see the beauty of where I live. You know, I live in a temperate rainforest in. Oh, in no. I, I can't wait to come. I can't yeah. wait to come. <laughs> One yeah. of these days. Yeah. It's totally lovely. You know, we'll, we'll talk off camera about, having you swing by here for a visit on your way back because, you know, I can drive you on the scary mountain roads. You can ah, drive. <laughs> oh, oh, funny you mentioned that. Uh, let me tell you. Um, yeah, I did make a little post and said, you guys, I need some ideas on where to go as long as there's no scary mountain roads. I, that's still, and Italy's got quite a few of them. Yeah, so really I'm does. working on that. You know, we, it's, I keep saying, I, I, you know, we have these fears and I tackle a fear and then I go, oh, wait a minute, but what about that? It's just a matter of just, you know, one, one at a time, one at a time. I'm, I'm totally with you, you know, and so, I don't know, fear can serve us and, and fear can hold us back. It's, you know, how we, how we look at it. And, you know, and it's also about what you like. I don't, I don't, you don't like to be on scary, skinny mountain You know, I, I like where the roads go. So that's a fear I really um, need to tackle. Um, therapy around it I have a um, one of my cousins just recommended a book um, so it's at, because Italy has a lot of scary mountain roads you mm -hmm. know and especially driving through Tuscany I stayed in a little town called Volterra which is at the top of a tippy top of a mountain mm -hmm. and I had to drive up there and I was just like you know going people were honking Italians don't have any problem honking at you <laughs> hollering at you out the window because I was going so slow mm -hmm. so yeah, that's that's on my list I'm working on it um, yeah, you definitely. got it. You got it. Awesome. I awesome. jumped out of a plane when I was in Belize. I thought that's going to knock that fear out of me. But, you know, jumping out of a plane and driving on a scary mountain road aren't quite the same. They're not the same. Not. 
but listen, if, if your fear is holding you back from the life of your dreams, then it's time to really do to something. To tackle it. And I've had to tackle a lot of fears, moving mm-hmm. to a country. I didn't know anyone, you know, getting, re- I actually was afraid to get rid of my possessions and the, I had years and years of accumulated per- possessions because I loved those things. And so there was a lot of fear around that. And so just, but listen, if you let these fears hold you back, you're never going to go anywhere. So you just got to, you got to design the dream. You got to take the first step. You got to trust in the process. You have to find really good mentors. And that's been a lifesaver for me is finding my tribe, finding people that had my back, finding mentors that could kind of lead the way. I've, I've worked with many coaches and I continue to work with coaches oh, yeah. every step of the way. So we got each other, right? Yes, we do. Totally. Got it. Got it. All right, guys. It's lindabeachcoaching.com. Go there and get hooked up with her and get download the freebie and get ready on August 3rd for the challenge that's coming up. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to be there and Yay. I'm going to be back here with you next week. So in the meantime, remember that happiness is a choice and you can always choose to be happy first. I'll see you Thursday. Bye.